Hello. Right, what I want to do today is first of all get the camera in a good position here because we are going to do some weathering. I'm new to this because I've, I've I've weathered a few things, but nothing massive. Stay, stay. I need some load the camera up. Um, that's not strong enough. Let's use that. That's it. That's it. Okay, what do we need? Um, Right, what we are going to do is weather some rolling stock. I'm just going to pick some stock out that I want to weather. Um, but first I've got to give a bit of dusting over. Apologise in advance, I have a cold. You won't catch it from me, but you'll probably hear me uh, sniff quite a bit. So... Last night I stayed up and I weathered some rolling stock. Got quite a bit done. Um, and you can see one here. This is a Dapoa grain hopper. Now, one thing I will say a bit quick. The colour of this is a brownie LMS colour anyway. So you can't really see... The weathering of the rust that well however it is there um, you can see the rust around the door down here the hatch um, and on the top of the wagon the rust around here as well and it just this is one of the wagons I don't use too much on my layout and that is purely down to, I, I just wasn't happy with the finished colour. One second. So what I wanted to do was change the uh, colour, not paint it, but give it a nice, dirty, grimy look. Um, so what we're going to do, this is a first video for this, um, from me anyway. But I got a freight train at home. Sorry. 
I got a freight train that I will be working on. It's the longest freight on my layout, 20 summit wagons, and it will be more. Um, the idea is that I will be doing a series of videos on that freight, how to improve your rolling stock. And what we will be doing to that freight is weathering it, detailing the wagons, putting loads on the wagons, everything like that. But today, I'm just going to give you a short video on the best and cheapest way to weather a wagon. Um, this will work pretty much for any wagon, even your locos and coaches. Um, I will be doing some coaches soon. Um, in fact, I'm going to be doing some of the Hornby Gresley coaches, not the new detailed ones, but some of the older ones. I have some maroon ones on the layout now, and I feel like they could do a bit of weathering. So that's the wagon I done last night. Um, I can't pick this up properly because it's not sealed yet. So what you got to do is spray the wagon with a varnish to seal it, because you don't want this. To, every time you pick it up, it come off in your hands. You get dirty hands. You don't want that. So to seal it, you can use a varnish spray, which is basically a um, a lacquer. But what I use is hairspray. It's cheap and it does exactly the same job, to be honest. Um, in fact, if I just move this on a side, I'll show you one I've done a couple of months ago. This is one of my fish fans at the fish train. Heavily weathered this one is. There's a rake of 10 of them. This is the heaviest weathering I've done on one of them um, and all I done was just the uh, air spray at the end and it holds it all in place and I can pick this one up nicely without getting anything on my fingers so that's good so we will put this one aside the green hopper I want to get more of them but I have a grey one as well I will be weathering which is in the freight we will be looking at so we're going to do a basic Hornby wagon. This is a, I believe it's a five plank wagon. You could buy them in packs of three. Um, I don't think you can get them any more, but you will find them in shops over the place. Um, I bought, what was it? Four packs of these, I think. Uh, two packs and I bought a pack at the um, Great Electric last year. And I got another pack as well. And they must be in the window somewhere. But yeah, what we're gonna do is weather this one up using weathering powders. Um, move right into the side. We will be using Humbro black weathering powder. You know, coal, dust and everything. And also we will be using a rusty weathering powder and um, this is ideal for the chassis and that because these are wooden plank wagons so the only bits of rust has got to be the metal bars down here and the chassis really and some of the yokes on the door um, I, I'm not too worried about that I'm more concerned about getting the chassis quite rusty and that um, and this one, like I said, I got six of these in the, one of the freights that run on the line, run on Stoke Summit quite regularly. So these will not be filled with coal, these will just be filled with stock, uh, crates, wire, you know, everything that would have ran on the railways in the day, back in the 50s and 60s in these open wagons. Um, I didn't want to put any ballast in these because I got a coal train, I got loads of coal wagons. I wanted to put something different. Originally these were bought for one of the uh, demolition trains that ran on I don't know what railway it was now I got footage of it and it used to run with like 30 of these sleepers would all go in these and it'd be pulled by two black folks but change of plan I'm using these in freights now and we are going to get in weather this wagon so first thing you need is weathering powders which we've got Uh, 
and you also need a brush to well I brush the rubbing powders on there's several ways you can do it I'm sure but I'm using these brushes I buy them cheap they're cheap brushes they cost one pound fifty I think one pound fifty you get several of them um, different sizes different kind of brushes but one pound fifty it's not bad if you uh leave paint on them i don't fill them out afterwards uh, we won't be using water or any glue with this this is just weathering powder it's quick and easy all you gotta do is just make sure it sticks to it in the end with air spray so we're gonna start with the sides um so let's get some black you don't need too much i won't put way too much on that you can just see that's about enough and usually I just dab it on first and then just brush it in like that and straight away I don't know if you can see but look at that panel now compared to that panel one of the things that bug me with rolling stock in bath the shelves especially stock there and weathered sometimes it don't look right on the layout it needs to be weathered really they look too bright at times I'm sure Hornby and Backman have done their research and getting the colours right, but they do seem bright at times. Now, I want these quite weathered. Um, any spill on, you know, table, don't worry too much about it. You get a lot for the price of these. I'm not too sure how much they cost now, but they're not stupid money. Um... They're quite affordable, actually. Another thing a lot of people use is chalk. And they grind the chalk up. And it's the same kind of thing, really. It's weathering powder, isn't it? It does work exactly the same. Now, there you go. Looks quite basic. It just tones the colour down. If you look at the end there, and then look at this side, it looks a lot better already. And again, when you've got a rolling stock filled up with goods and everything, that just makes it five times better. Now, not too worried about the chassis at the moment. What I'm going to do is do all around the wagon apart from one end, so I can pick it up, and then we do the chassis, and then we do the end. So... Just making sure I've got enough on that, really. Also, it's a lot easier doing these kind of wagons than steel wagons because they got the grooves of the wood in. There you go. Straight away, that wagon looks a lot better. Looks like it is in um, the 50s. So let's do one of the ends now. It took me a very long time to get, I would say, the nerve to actually uh, weather some of my rolling stock. I always put it off. Um, I would never weather any of my good engines. Um, if I do manage to get some engines cheap one day or something, I might give it a go. But there's no way in this world I would weather my A4s and that. Can't do it. There we go. That looks quite good. You do get build-up sometimes like that. I'm happy to keep that, adds more fat, um, but you can get rid of that with a harder brush. If there's anything you don't like on this wagon, when you're weathering your wagons, just use an harder brush and it will come off. Uh, you can use water as well. Gotta be careful with water though, because water will turn it to paint slightly. Well, what I found though anyway. Um, I just use an harder brush really, get rid of anything I don't like. Or 
also, if you want to go to the extra detail, you can also like weather some of the planks so it looks like an older plank um, in the wagon because these planks were replaced constantly on railways, especially if they got damaged in transit or anything. But that's no, very simple. So all I'm doing is just dabbing it on with a brush. Um, I do try and hide some of the writing because in the 15th and 60s, it's very hard to see the writing on a lot of stock. You could, but it's still very hard. You will get very dirty hands doing this as well. So straight away, that looks a lot better. Um, have I got a one I can get to? Just to do that. Comparison. So there's the wagon. This is before and after. Look at the colour difference straight away. It's brilliant. They just look a lot better weathered up. And it's not really changing the colour. It's just making it darker. So now we're going to do the chassis. So this is where the rust comes in. So you can use a different brush. Doesn't bother me too much because I mix these colors quite a bit. So I will be using the same brush. Um, and all you do, now this will show up straight away because obviously it's a brighter color. And just spread it on. Don't worry about the brush getting damaged if you, if you bought cheap brushes. This brush will probably do 10 wagons before this knackers and all bristles will come out and everything. That's about enough on that, I don't need any more. Just... So you can see the rust now on the axle boxes. Now, I don't want them too rusty, so what I do is get a bit of black and go over it with a black. And that gives it a really dark, rusty colour. Straight away, you can see the difference. And it just makes the rust a little bit... Um, like it's coming out of the uh, paint a, a bit. There we go. So yeah, so what we're going to do now is weather this end. This washer made funny noises as well. Now because I've been holding this wagon this end, you see it get built up? That's because of the sweat on my fingers. It's not really sweat, but it's built up quite well. Um, and you know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that, so what I'm going to do... Bear with me. This is my harder brush. There you go. Got rid of it straight away. Um, I don't really have to use that hard brush that much, but that did build up pretty fast. Now you can go to extra detail on the buffers if you want to by weathering them up. Um, the actual buffer beam, I will, with a bit of rust, of course. So what I'll do, I'll show you. There's the buffer beam. You've got to hold it on angle or something. There you go, and then just add a bit of black, and it does the orange down straight away. I need a little bit more. But that's enough. So I haven't done that side, but done that side. Right, so let's do the other side now. Chassis.
Again, don't worry if you put too much of this rust on because you can just dull it down with the back. Like so. I am dropping not too much, but more than I would like to. There we go. Now, I haven't got the air spray with me, so I can't show you how to do that. But they look pretty good. They do, actually. And it's the first wagon I've done like this. I did do a bigger wagon, which I will just show you. So let's put that one aside. And just move me brushes. So I got a good couple of these now. CCT vans. And in the arm. Now this is not weathered. Might be like that. And this is weathered. Straight away, the sun shining on it a bit, a reflection of the window, but the difference is really good. Let's put in that. There we go, so unweathered, weathered. Not weathered, weathered. So I've done this one last night. And again, the colour's too bright for me, so I want to dull it down. Also done the roof as well. But yeah, this one turned out really well. This one's more or less finished. It, close couplings and everything. Couplings have been brought back. And this one will run in my freight, one of my freight trains. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, let me move that back. And we'll do a comparison of this one. So we got not weathered, weathered. Difference is great. Straight away, this looks like it. It should be on a dirty, grimy railway was in the fifties and sixties. So yeah, they worked out really well. So that's it. Like I said, I will be doing a video on the entire freight, which will be fun. But thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe. And I will see you all again soon with more videos like this. Bye for now.